Aloha. Hello. No, no. Aloha. Aloha. Everyone who's been on the trip. Aloha. Forevermore greets as aloha. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah, hopefully we didn't fuck up our mics. No, I, I meant to hug you in a way that didn't touch All me. right. Well, tell me now if we uh, Yeah. the gods. So look who's here. My little girl. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I have, I mean, we were in Hawaii together. I missed you. I know that sounds uh, provocative. <laughs> and it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, you have to hear these stories, <laughs> people. And I have so much to ask you because we were there in December. Yeah. Then I watched your reality show right which oh was shot God. which was shot before. before so it's like one of those serial episodic <laughs> shows that they go six months earlier right oh my god yeah <laughs> exactly it just wrapped right when we like went on that trip is that right yeah pretty much right before it okay so i'm oh. inquiring minds want to know oh yeah because i saw you on the trip with chris yes and i felt i knew a lot about you and him yeah <laughs> and then from I'm... spending a week but then i saw the backstory yep so. Your trip was what really made us go, okay, let's like, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Like we were still Is like kind of deciding right? on the trip. Yeah. We almost didn't make it on the trip. We almost broke up right before it. And then we went on it. We had such a good time and we just, it is the best trip we're both ever, such right? fans of yours. And so it was so cool to feel ourselves around you, this person that we both have in common of like, you know, our, our sense of humor and what we're, the things we are into uh, in media kind of connect us. And so to share that trip and then to become friends with you over it and for you to like him, it just made me see him in a light where I was like, wow, this guy's fucking great. And um, yeah, it was just the best trip. So it's really about me. It was. It, it always is, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> even when it, This place is great. When it's like, your, I know, isn't this place Oh my great? God, it's awesome. I know. I can't uh, believe we're gonna, this. We're going to have a lot of good times here. You're going to party here, right? Like this isn't just I was, for- I partied for years here. That, I, oh, I mean, this has been Club around? Rent. Oh yeah. I've had this, this house for almost 20 years. Um, I cannot believe no, the backyard. I cannot believe this house. I, I mean, I, I only saw it from this the isn't back. I live next door. Yeah, I, no, I know. <laughs> I saw that. I don't even live here. It, I, you're this like the, the minimalist house. style that I saw through the window as I walked past. And then what? your backyard is so gorgeous. No, I no, saw, that's a, you can't see my house from where you came in. I, I crossed the yard right here. Uh, well, was... well, your neighbors have a great place then. I don't know. <laughs> I what... am the neighbor. That's the point. <laughs> your place is so... And your backyard anyway, just keeps on going. Well... Anyway, you got a nice place. Point, and this is an point, awesome little... Uh, the point is, I, I'm studio. realizing right now that this love story, that I'm going to get to the bottom yes. of. Yes. Um, and I'm glad it sounds to me like there's been a happy ending. Yes. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. Yes. Okay. So... Uh, and apparently, it was really a three-act play where I... <laughs> you were... Oh, man, middle. if we could have captured that. they E would have loved that. Yeah, what? my show. Just going, oh, us Hawaii? going on a trip with Bill Maher. I mean, they well, were dying that... me to involve my famous friends. And, like, what you and you? I just weren't that close at that time. Otherwise, I would have been FaceTiming you every... You would have been a, a main character of the show if you wanted to be. No, I can't. No, of course not. Would you ever do a reality show? I don't show? do FaceTime and... This is kind uh, of like a reality show. Yes. Well, that was my idea, was to, like, I said, podcasts, they look horrible. It's just like, they're very stilted. They're just in somebody's house. You got a big penis mic in your face, you know? <laughs> yes, it's, yes. it's just terrible. I said, <laughs> I have this place that's cool. I could, like, actually put a little money into, like, just doing it really right where no did. one's in the room and you don't even know where the cameras are yeah and we're getting high and uh I've, but a, a real an actual re no of course i could i could not do that i'm uh, <laughs> you could just, it would be fascinating well, I could. like I, a docu I mean, like a, a, a documentary about you i would love to watch an, an hbo documentary like following you yeah. On the road or on the even yeah, that actually that's that a great idea. That could be kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, I, we would love to. I loved pulling back the curtain, and this is what this is really. Okay, so it's just for, easier for, to do a reality show. You don't okay, have to prepare at me, all, and you can be high for it, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> let me. But wait, you're not going to get me off this <laughs> sorry, sorry. track. Yes, because yes, get back I'm on. I'm so curious. I've yeah. been wanting. To, I haven't seen you in a couple of months. Yes. So I'm dying to find out. Okay, now let's put the, the timeline together like sure. they do when they ruin the Godfathers <laughs> and they put the God, you ever see it? They make the Godfather saga. And of course, Godfather 2 takes place both before and after oh, one. Oh, really? 
Yes, which is why it's so great. Oh. You, you never saw The Godfathers? Oh, what are you, sorry. a fucking communist? I... <laughs> what? I'm so disappointed Oh, myself. my God, what and a I, dick. I know, what a dick. Oh. I know, and oh. I can't even, I, I can't I'm going to call Chris it. and tell him not to marry I... enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't know well, if we'll get married. I mean, it's but not. the Godfather. Come yes. on. I no, I know. And There's the most even... embarrassing part, I don't even want to say this because it's just so it's so. I I auditioned for a movie recently um, with reading with Francis Ford Coppola. Just <gasps> called in. No, no first audition. Just that you and five other people auditioning for this Metropolis, like his movie that he's spending all his money on and has investors. Whoa. And just, because he wanted a female comic for this role. Didn't get it, but um, maybe because I didn't watch. I just didn't, I didn't do my research. I didn't have time. And I certainly didn't lie to him about it. Um, he didn't ask me, but um, oh yeah, it's, I, I, I'm bad about that. I know, I know there are man, many things that I need to catch up on, but it was so, it was incredible. Well, wait, Reading have, with if, him, looking at him in the eyes and like doing a scene where I'm crying. It was awesome. He was like, do you want to read with this guy or with me? And I'm like, with you. I'm right. never going to get to do this again. I'm not right. getting this part. You're you. insane to ask me to come here. <laughs> you, iconic figure who I've never been bothered enough to watch I, his main movie. I mean, someday I'm this so... <laughs> is going to mean so much to me, but not today. All I can I say is, I know. chicks. I don't like violence. Don't... <laughs> I don't like violence. I don't like gun it's violence. Not... That's why I can't watch well, The Sopranos. Well, I can't watch The Wire. You can't like, watch anything. Breaking Bad. I can't watch any of it. I really can't. I, I just, oh, come I'm, on. I know that it's I would ketchup. love it. That's it's... why I love Mad Men. Nothing fucking happens happens there's no jump scares it's well just it's a, a different I, I love mad men oh, too it's great oh I, I agree but i'm safe in knowing but no one's gonna get their head blown off it's very different than nowhere. the godfather you can like both things i do i, I believe I, I, I know i would love it i i just have to be in the right state of mind and i um but also like compared to the violence that's in movies today it's very tame well i don't this, watch any of it bill i, I don't know. watch okay but people do get shot in the mafia I know, but I but don't want to see it. I really don't I know, like it. I but that's not the focus of the movie. It's if a, you can tell me when it's going to happen and I can look away or put a pillow over my head, I'll do it. No. You have to get over that. <laughs> I look up I, 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 when I there's going to the, be scary the, moments in movies. The pillow is not the answer. I, what the, I do is I blur my eyes. I came up with that trick back when I was very ashamed pillow, of being a, a, no. a scaredy cat. I would learn how to, I can blur my eyes enough that I can't The um, pillow tell what's going is on. like vaccines. The, fight this oh. battle internally. Win it inside oh, of you. I don't want to. I know that I'm missing out on good stuff, but I okay. really, yeah, we all have, I have weird fears. There are things I, I've never seen, uh, you know, Sense and Sensibility. And oh, you know what Czech I've only movies. done? Pride and Prejudice. Have you seen Pride and Prejudice? Um, oh, I love Pride and Prejudice because oh. Kira Knightley oh. is at her smoking hottest. Oh, my it, God. That's, uh, yes. I only I, watched that movie. I've only seen that movie in the clips of just her and Darcy, and oh. it's all YouTube compilated into the hottest scenes. She, and I, I masturbate to it. I'm not even joking you. It's so hot, and it's just yeah. their hand their hand will touch, just linger, and it's the ho it's hotter than porn to me. Um, oh, that movie. I don't know if I can go that far, but... She, well, I mean, I... <laughs> but she is lava. She's That's amazing. My new, I, by the way, I'm She's starting lava. this. Yes. I like The it. kids changed hot to fire because that was so original. Oh, lava. <laughs> so much good. Of, right. So I thought, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to up the ante. Lava. That's what I'm That's so good. I think so. That's a, right. I love it. I'll, I'll use it. And you know where tail. they find lava? Hawaii. Hawaii. So let's there get we go. Back We're back to, to Hawaii. Okay. So my, my analogy with the Godfather was yes. th they should just. You should never do that. They they showed the beginning of part two, which takes place at the earliest, and then they showed the regular Godfather, and then the parts in Godfather two, which took place after. It, there's a reason why he did it this way, because the past comments on the on the future. Okay. Okay. So, but let's fuck that up and do it with yours. Cause, yeah. Because it's not the Godfather; it's just your life. Yeah. So. I'm watching the reality show, which is before Hawaii. Yes. It's and called Welcome Home, Nikki Glazer. It's on E! First season, available now. Beautiful. On Peacock. <laughs> if you want to go watch it. No, you should do that. Yeah, right? Absolutely. I'm so bad at doing that. No, that, you're and when good I at that. I'm really not, You're though, bad though. at watching movies. <laughs> I'm so bad at self-promo, but I, I just feel like really? if I were... Oh, I'm the worst at it. Well, I enjoyed the fuck out of it, so well, that's I a good really, endorsement. You watching it and liking it meant Well, especially so much after I had come to know you so yeah, well. When yeah, you go away with someone for a week and their boyfriend... Yes. Apparently, we yes. have good news. Um... 
you know, I, of course I was curious. And then, of course, you, you're adorable. So I just Thank loved you. it. I felt like I know your parents. Now you told me a lot about them. Yes, they and I love, love you. my ass, yeah. right? Oh, okay. my God. Right. Well, we, I grew up I, in a house of Mar. Yeah, I'm going to go to St. Louis, I think, next year or sometime soon. And they will yes, definitely come. They will. Okay. Um, I love that. I've seen you so many times. I love the Louis, episode yes. where you played your hometown. Oh, and then yes. The one where you went to Chicago and fucked Chris after. Such yes, a finally long... <laughs> gave in to that after abstaining for a while. It was interesting. So, okay, so here's the thing. At the beginning of this, you go back to St. Louis. This is Chris, who I adore him. I, oh, do, I did. he adores you too. Yes. I love, okay. I love your affection for him. And so, well, how can you not? He's like, I can see why he is the guy. You know, he checks oh, all the boxes kind of guy. He yes, really does. Yes. He's great looking. He's super nice. You're he's approved. smart. Means he's a lot funny. To me. yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I could see why it would be crushing if you couldn't make it work with him because there's probably not a second place contender. No, we there's not. We know it's not Blake Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that story. I shot that shot. <laughs> oh, my God. Didn't you that, tell that I Howard mean, Stern story? Yeah, that, like, <laughs> that could have happened had I followed up. A hundred percent. But of, I am not someone who followed like uh, No, but the end of the story was that he, he, he sort did. of insulted you but then asked if you <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He, we I got a DM later on that was like, I'd be down I, if you're down, essentially. I, I love that. He said the people have spoken, which uh, everyone that, it was talking like, Blake, you need to Oh. Come on, Nikki threw herself at you. Come on, you got to do this. And he just wrote the people have spoken in my DMs, which is pretty hot DM. That's a pretty good one. Wow, that's very charitable of you because it also could be taken as very arrogant. Of and, like, and, I guess I'll very, fuck you because yes, people want me to. Exactly. Like, oh, God, very, why do I take that? Like, exactly. this is what I do. I spin these guys, these F right. boys that... They seem to be like you, you know need, belittling themselves to even throw me a bone, and I'm like, I, thank you. I, it's it's sad that I had to find that, point that out to you. It isn't that sad. It really is. I know it is. You, it's something. You, it's, it, it's you need me as your shrink. You need to come here more. That's why I'm here. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel yield Look, I got your to you. back together with your boyfriend. You really did. I, I'm straightening out on Blake yes. Griffin. I am the indispensable it person in so your life. Bad. I one Glazer. time, I'm not even kidding you, Bill. One time I liked this guy so much and he could not compliment me. Never. He was someone I would hook up with, so I knew he found me sexually attractive, but he could never say it. He would never say, like, God, you look good, or um, or you just nothing sexual when we would talk on the phone. It was long distance. And when we did hook up, and one time I was so desperate for it. I used to FaceTime with him, and when I would open up the freezer and stick my white T-shirt with no bra on in the freezer before I answered the phone from him if I knew he was going to FaceTime. So my, I would be, like, nipping out through the shirt. So it would be so, so egregious he'd have to say something. Like, you can't miss it. So cool. So I'm just <laughs> desperate for this guy to say anything. And he would never say anything. And then one time, I was just so sad. I got off the phone with him and because I had to go. I was going for a run. It was getting dark outside. And he goes, yeah, you should go. And I was like really and he's like yeah i mean you're pretty rapeable and i oh blushed i was like that's how starved i was and i knew immediately how sad that was that i was like oh my god he acknowledged someone wants to rape me but i really <laughs> that's how starved i was from affection from this fucking idiot well Ugh. i see i find that one less offensive than the blake griffin one. yes because you're right there's a there's Oh, mm. Because you knew this guy. First of all, you, you knew he's not a rapist, right? He wasn't. Right, but he was just saying a, other men might want to yes, rape you. And I was it's like, a, thanks. It's a compliment that, yes, if you are one of the woke who's always looking, he was trying to, to, be funny. looking to be offended, yes. you can always find offense in anything. But if you know offended. someone's in, intent, if you know what, if there were no other actual rapists around, oh, no, I wasn't who would offended. actually take a. Okay. And he's right. No, I'm saying, but some people would be. Oh, of course. And I'm saying, I find the Blake Griffin one more offensive because sure. it's, it's actually demeaning in a. It, it's the kind of thing, not to knock him, I like him, but like you, you say when you're 30, you're just stupid. Well, I was like real horny for it for stupid. some reason. I said stupid things like that too, thinking I was being funny, and it was like, Looking back, it's like, oh, yeah. You know what I read it as, though? Okay, yeah. Maybe I'm not going to get him to admit, like, I want to fuck you. Maybe I won't get that out of a DM. But him saying to me, the people have spoken, whatever the fuck he said, it, he still wants to. And that's really all I need. I know. <laughs> exactly. He, that, that's really oh, no. all I needed. I don't want to fuck him. I just want to know that I could. Like, that's, it was like, check. Okay, got it. Right. And then, you know, never which following is, through. Which is, I'm glad you brought that up. That is a, a 
key smart. thing Isn't with, it? with women I've noticed over the years. I know they're perfect ethereal beings. Yeah. No argument there. Of course. But boy, do they like doing that. Like, even if they don't want to fuck you, they want to know that you would. Because being fuckable is being is yes. is valuable. I know, but yeah, and it it, it just it means we're still alive. It yeah. means we still have uh, some power over you guys. You know, we still have the ray is working. I always call it the ray, like this, like <laughs> like the you know hot chicks. They just have it's like they have oh. this thing they can shine in the guys if, if they just yes. shine it for five seconds in their eyes, they can get to do anything. Yes, and at some point when you feel like that ray is flicking, flickering. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, that's, that's you know, why I you am. You want to have the ray. That's why I'm funny is because I know the ray will flick, like the ray is flickering. I knew it would flicker you even when it was shining the brightest. Right now. Oh, thank you. you I do. mean, I had full hair good. and makeup and I'm feeling good. Yeah, but you but just like, look, you look glowy. Oh, thank you. You're not I, with child. I'm probably like ovulating, to be honest with you. There are a couple <laughs> days a month where you are like walking down the street and you just get, you just can tell that you're more, you just look sexual to people and you're not even doing anything different. Now, but it's because we're, I'm probably I, like I, cycle. I know I should know this from eighth grade gym class when we had the health section. Oh, no, you shouldn't. I mean, but they didn't like teach ovulating, that. this is when your body. That's when you can conceive a baby. Making eggs? No, that's when, that's when it's ovulation. Oh, of course. That's time to, that's when right. if you come in me, right. you're going to get a baby. So that's when we're peak attractive. I've seen many sitcoms where the couple was trying to have a baby and, yes. the, and the man is, is like taking her, or she or he, one of them is taking their temperature mm -hmm. because I guess it elevates when you're. Yes. Maybe, yeah. So you're literally I, hotter. And I was like, "Fuck me now," because my temper. It's so it's hot. Like, I, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm always thinking. It's like, really. I use an anal thermometer, so it is kind of hot. Um, <laughs> of course no, you do. Of course I do. We oh, we, we we talked about this. I, I <laughs> mean, how our trip started, sweetheart. I knew more about you and anal before I got to reach. <laughs> Trying to get people into it. By the it. time we landed in Honolulu. I mean, I'm not trying to titillate. I like, I don't. No, no, it was it very really real. It really is like, I just like, I just like talking about sex and I like hearing what people oh, are into and I like, it's just, it's, it's, it's endlessly fascinating to me. I don't oh. think I'll ever bore a it. It is the most endlessly fascinating subject. Yeah, I, I'm glad you agree. Oh, absolutely. And that's why your special is great. Oh, because you. you can talk about it for most of the whole time. Yeah. And it doesn't where it's not like oh oh this subject more on this no because there's always ever more to say about it yeah I, my i think my favorite line was um because the way you got to it uh what is my pussy in the wound tang Wu tang clan? oh yes yes like i um <laughs> like, talking about toilet paper well, that i get in my let's vagina. not ruin it <laughs> but uh, it's an HBO. It goes on HBO July yes. 16th. Right? Yes. Okay. Saturday, July 16th. That's it's very be on exciting. HBO Max. Um, I just did my 12th. Oh my! I know. And Congratulations. Right. So, and that I was mean, probably about your. I age. got to see it right before you taped it, though. You were like. Yes. Getting ready. That's right. In Hawaii. Yes, that's oh my right. God, it, was, it was so fucking tight. It was so. Yeah. I mean, that was. It was so great to watch you oh, there thanks. and and just go up all high and just like. <laughs> I can't what believe do you, you do stand up high, and that's the only time you get high. Like you are so fascinating well, to me. It's not exactly. Well, not the, the only. only time. Well, you didn't have the podcast yet when you told me that, but that was so fascinating right. to me. I definitely don't do it for real time because that's serious. Because business. why not? It's my re because it's my real job. You know, I try to tell it. I'm so happy people are liking this podcast, but I try to tell them, you know, um, if someone like likes the podcast. And I did it because there are people who really, I don't know how to say this, but they're just not into what's really going on, the more serious things in the world. To, yeah. to, I don't know why. It's such a fucking funny show, and I'm explaining it to you in ways anybody could understand. Oh, I'm doing all the work for you, and it's still too much for a lot of people. Still too much. Yeah, you're okay. so right. So, so right. like, when they talk about the podcast. No one's making it more palatable than you. And yes. Okay, but I get it. You know, if if I start talking about Mitch McConnell, there's many people. There, I don't know who the fuck that is. I may have heard the name. And it's like, okay, I can't go all the way back to explaining who that is. Right. So, no, yes, you're going to lose a lot of people. So, But when the people say to me, you know, like, they're like this, of course I love it. But it's not like a, like, this show is so much fun and I love that we can do this. But the other, I never had a family or kids. 
real time is my kids. You know, yeah. it's like, if you don't watch that show, you don't want to meet my kids, which is fine because I've known a lot of people a who, <laughs> well, I didn't want to meet, didn't want their, to meet kids. their kids. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's fine that you don't want to meet my kids, but, but that's we the could, thing I'm we, most proud of. And we could only get so close if you don't want to meet my kids. Yes. Yes. We can get you, close, but not completely close. If you don't have, if you don't, as, as a friend of yours or as a, a fan, have an interest in that part of what you do, the thing you do that you've done the longest and that you've perfected and that you put the most work into, and the thing that you're not high for, and it's much more meaningful. Purpose. And yeah. you know, I'm hoping we're on a good day. We're putting a lot of ideas in the water that do get picked up, even yes. though they will not <laughs> mention the show that dare not speak its name. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just a whole different level. And the you know, the it's like senators and governors, and you know, I mean, it's just a whole. It's your godfather. <laughs> it's, old, it's my yeah. kids. Yes, it's your kid. But you know, this is like my weekend in Vegas. I know. That's why I do all this stuff. That's why I do reality shows. That's why I do podcasts because it's easy. It's fun. But you know, you have. It's hard because it you know takes time. But it's when compared to real time, then what goes into that kind of show? Oh my god, my life is so. But you easy. have that ability of like a lot of really great comics who can like um, take subject matter that everyone can understand, mm. but also never insult the intelligence of the most intelligent people watching. Oh, that's nice. It's so true. I mean, and that's so I... on display in that special. Oh, thank you. That means so much. It's I true. can't stand being talked down to when I go see anything. I'll walk out of movies. I'll stand up, I think, can be so pandering and so I'll watch my really smart friends just do the lowest brow stuff that I really? know... Just, I just see it all the time, like w people appealing to the easiest thing. And I do it sometimes too. It's even in that special. There's a couple of lazy moments where I go, well, you could have fucking tightened that up. That was a little, that was a lazy transition that had no substance. And like, you could have had a joke there, Nikki. But. Well, Nikki, you I know just, what they say, no work of art is ever finished. It's just oh abandoned. Oh, God. I, so, yes, nothing I really got to be right, more yeah, okay about that That's good. shit. It's, it haunts but, me. Okay, but you do talk okay. in it a lot about fucking your parents. Now, when, you, <laughs> know, right? when you were doing that, did you say to yourself, boy, this is an area that's been picked over by a lot of comics. <laughs> Maybe I should stay away from this. Or did you say... That was the one, yeah. Fucking your parents. I mean... I, I don't know. It just I I was gonna like skip that part of the special, even though I opened with it. And I for a while the version that I was messing with had that totally removed forever. And what? then I was like, that is so weird. And I haven't heard anyone even get close to anything no. this fucking no. fucked up. It kind of really just no. If you make it past that, you can get through anything. And it's right at the top of the special and kind of shows you. Yeah. What I'm about. And it I, and it proves my point, which is I'm not doing things to be shocking, which I think so many people dismiss female comics or any comics that talk about sex or cuss or whatever as taking the easy ro road out. But it's like, this is just the stuff that makes me laugh and makes me think. And it's just what I want to do. Well, I must tell you that <clears throat> the more things change the same. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not what <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought that quote was too long anyway. <laughs> we all know what you mean. The more things I'm just change. like doing like we do on Twitter when they put the things together, yes, making it yes, shorter. Please. The more things change the same. We are supported by Wine Enthusiast. You know the old saying, wine, women, and song? Well, it morphed over the years into an even better saying, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But we live in a crazy time when you can't even trust your drugs anymore. But you can always trust wine, unless you don't have it properly stored. So now it's the time to get those bottles out of boxes or off your countertops and protect them with a wine fridge from Wine Enthusiast. Wine Enthusiast designs and offers the largest selection of wine coolers for every drinker, every budget, and every size collection, from six to 600 bottles. Plus, expert wine storage consultants are available by phone to help you find the right fit for all your needs. Wine Enthusiast is the premier destination for the wine lifestyle, offering an incredible selection of unique wine accessories, glassware, furniture, wine storage, gifts, and more. I love Wine Enthusiast, and I'm not just saying that because they sent some amazing custom club random glassware for me and my guests to use. Visit wineenthusiast.com or text the code RANDOM 
to 511-511 to check out all of Wine Enthusiast's summer savings. Text RANDOM to 511-511. Text RANDOM to 511-511 today. Certain exclusions may apply. You may receive up to one additional text. Text fees may apply. Text STOP to opt out. We are supported by SignalWire. If you're a developer or product builder trying to add video communication to your app or service, there is no good option. You either build from scratch, which can take forever, or try to repurpose an existing app like Zoom, or as I like to call it, hey, you froze. But what if you could have out-of-the-box video conference ability with unlimited control to customize the experience to fit your application? I really hope the nerds are listening because this is good shit. SignalWire is a technology arsenal that allows anyone with an idea to create more natural, real-time, interactive experiences and do it fast. With SignalWire, you can build whatever you can imagine with cutting-edge, real-time video. And SignalWire provides developer-friendly APIs and SDKs to help you get up and running with a few clicks and a snippet of code, instead of months of complex development work. Visit SignalWire.com slash random to sign up for a free account and receive an additional 5,000 video minutes for testing your app or integration. Go to SignalWire.com slash random. Get communications APIs from the OGs of software. Define telecom at SignalWire. Go to SignalWire.com slash random. I can't get over like the constant like nagging regret of I could have done better, I could have worked harder. And I listen to Sam Harris really, and I know there's that? no free will. That's the only <laughs> thing that helps me is Sam Harris convincing me that it was never gonna go any other way. This was always the way um, and just accept it. And wow. do better next time. Like I, it was I mean, never I, gonna be different. I, Even if you rewound, hit, whatever state of mind you were in, you couldn't, you couldn't work harder in that right. moment. Or you would. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I certainly, um, Seed my love for Sam Harris to no man or woman. Yeah, he's the best. He is. But I, I he really is. So I think what, what we're saying is like, I'm always beating myself up for, like, why this thing you learned last week you didn't know ten years ago. Yourself? Yes. Oh, interesting. Because you're so forgiving of other people who just learned something. I, I learned, love your theory. I've, I've on learned that. to be that. Yes. What is your but, theory on that? I remember you saying there was a time where I learned gazpacho. I, that's it. I love that. That's the gazpacho theory. Yes. That yeah. I call it that because you know you were not born knowing gazpacho soup is served cold. I once complained about cold gazpacho soup, but <laughs> it's like everything you learn in life is yeah. a version of that. You just yes. learned it on that day, you know? So yes. if somebody doesn't know something, don't yell at them for that. Be like, okay, this is the day you yeah. learned it. Now you might chide them in a little and say, it's a little late. You're 26. How did you You should have known that? the three branches yes. of government by now. Right, But right. you know what? It, you live in a dumb country and the educational That's system. That's why I haven't seen The Godfather. Like, it's a thing. It's the three branches of government. I know I should know it. I know I should see it. I, I feel like I'm dodging conversations about it constantly so people don't know that I don't know about it. But I know enough references that I can get by and kind of... Um, but yeah, I... I, I So that's where you beat yourself up as things where you go, oh, I didn't know that. And you kind of catch yourself being like, oh, fuck, I should Not know. just know that. Yes. I mean, but also just behavior and just ways to live. You know, big things. They're like, oh, I could have been living like this 10 years ago. I'll give you an example. This yeah, is more, more mundane. It's not as deep and psychological as most of them, but like two meals a day. I started eating two meals instead of three about, mm, I don't know, three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And I could have been doing that my whole life. Mm. It's the three meals a day is just something somebody pulled right out of their ass. They just made it up. There's nothing in our history or medically why you need three i mean one would probably be stretching it a little right four You're gonna be is probably for... what most people eat now because yes. it's a fucking fat country uh -huh. but uh it's a it's a, a country of addicts and food is the cheapest and most uh unregulated drug it is a drug it's and a so, huge drug. but it, unlike all other drugs in drug war times where they were societal uh, protests against using them, this, they laud you now. Yes. I mean, it's it's so reversed that it's body positivity. But 
Don't, right. Don't get me on this because I mean, I can, I can. Well, it's funny that you should say that you are like, wow, I could have been doing two meals a day. I just started eating three meals a day, and it changed my life. And that's so what funny because I used, I used to as little meals as I could just to always stay thin, always feel like I was. Uh, a is good woman right? is a restricting woman, a woman that's not indulging. So then I wow. I suffered because I was always hungry or I was always like, oh my God, I just ate too much because I would overeat because I starved. Right. So I wasn't, it didn't fit my lifestyle to skip meals, but I just didn't know any other way. So that's what women do. So now you're more normal, you're saying. And now I just feed myself and I'm not focused on food. But you ate in Hawaii. Right, but that, that's, I, I started eating three meals a day in uh, March or like in May of 2020. I like had okay. a meltdown. So let's get back to this. To my boyfriend. We go, you go back home to St. Louis. Yeah. What month was that? 2020. March 2020. March of 2021. Yeah. Okay. So at the beginning. 2020. 2020. Yeah. Okay. So right. Right when the pandemic mm -hmm. hit. Lived okay. with my parents for 10 months. Right. And these. Did your show from my dad. Yes. I remember. On, by Zoom. Right. So cool. Okay. So. But the big storyline. And it's the reality. I mean, you weren't making it up. Is you'd known Chris for eight years. Yeah. I mean, on and off is a good way to describe it. It was on and off. Right. Yes. Okay. He's in St. Louis. You came out here. No, he was here. He, oh, was, he was. We here, met right? in New York on my show. I had an MTV show when mm. I was at my first TV show, and he was a supervising producer. I fell in love with him from afar. I had a crush on him the whole time. Didn't know how to even flirt. I was so awkward with boys. I like. I had no experience really at all except like blackout drunk sex and I had just gotten sober a year before I got the show. Wow. And so he's the first guy I liked when I was sober and I was like, how am I even gonna have sex with, how would I even kiss someone sober? Like it was just foreign to me. Finally, um, someone coached me on how to flirt and so he kind of knew that I liked him and then we got together. How we old were you? 27. Like real stunt. You knew how to flirt. No, Bill, I'm not kidding you. He thought I, he was he was gonna quit the show because he thought I hated him when I was desperately in love with him because I liked him so much I didn't know I didn't want to let him know so I wouldn't look at him Whoa. I would ignore him I'd be kind right. of mean to him I right. just I, I couldn't handle it. He literally like thought like a child, I, like a child, <laughs> like a child. I was so like stunted. Like a kid in school, like a fourth grader would Absolutely. do that. Absolutely, I, I, I don't like you. And my my, I was crying in my showrunner's office, and she was like. Because I was like, he's flirting with the girl, like the wardrobe girl, and I love him so much. And she was like, he doesn't even know you like him at all, Nikki. We see you around him. And she goes, but I can take an order. So she goes, go to his desk right now. You're going to talk about the up upcoming Logan Lerman interview that he's producing. You're going to sit at his desk until he knows you like him. You're going to touch his leg at one point. For two seconds, you're going to leave that touch on. Oh my you're going to make eye contact longer than four seconds, and you have to count it out like she taught me. And I just did it, and then after that, he knew I liked him. And it really worked. Who was this person who told This was you? Kim Gamble. She was my showrunner who was friends with him, who was like just laughing at me, crying. Because in that, she goes, he would so like you, Nikki. He has no idea. Wow. I, so, now that, yeah. so I guess, I, ne I never knew that part of it. Yeah. And so finally, like I went over to his house, like I invited myself over to his house. He was very hesitant because I'm the host of the show. He's a producer right. on it. He's like, Right. I'm not going to make a move unless I know for sure. And I am sending him right. half signals. And so I will go over to his house. I invite myself over to like make chili at his place. And I oh. just am nervous on the couch next to him. He gets up to go to the bathroom. I scoot closer to where he was. He comes back. He like scoots further away. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't like me. So then I just get, like, get cold. And then I go home and I'm like, I I'm over it. I'm not like, and this has been months of me like loving him. And I go, I leave and I'm just like, it's not happening. I call my friends. I'm like, he didn't get it. And. I'm done, and I go to work the next day, and I'm just like mad at him, and you know I'm not gonna fire. Him. There's no like, f this isn't me like me tooing him. And I mean I'm guessing in, in a, some right. gray area there is. Maybe I was mad at this person because they didn't like me. He wasn't gonna lose his job because of it or anything. I I had no idea that I w wielded any power in this moment of my life. But um, I uh, I remember the next night I gave him one last chance. He lived in. Uh, Brooklyn and I was in Manhattan at the time and I was going to the comedy cellar and to do a late night set at like 11 o'clock and it was on a work night. We had work the next day and um, and I was just like, hey, are you in the city? Texted him and he was like, no, why? And I was like, oh, I'm going to the cellar. I thought if you were like out, you could just stop by. And he was like, I'll be there. And I was like, oh my God. And then he stayed the whole night and we, and Artie Lang really like gave me, wingmanned me by being like, hey, Nikki. And he's a huge Artie Lang fan. He was like, Artie Lang, that's, you're friends with him. And I was like, 
And then um, and then we walked out to Sixth Avenue. And then finally, and then I I was adamant on not making the first move because I am such a control freak. I always make the first move with guys. It never had worked for me. So I was like, I will not. He is going to kiss me first, which I had never once let a guy kiss me because it just and he did. It gets so awkward that I just want to control it. And so I just waited, kept my mouth shut, and he did the hottest thing. He just goes, get over here. And he just grabbed my arm and just, like, kind of tugged me. And I was just like, ah, and we made out. And then I was just, like, so in love. On 6th Avenue? Yeah, on 6th Avenue. And then I jumped into a cab and, um, f- like, f- fleed into the night. And I was just like, I got it. And I was then I was terrified to do anything else with him. But shortly after that, we became boyfriend and girlfriend. And okay. then we broke up a bunch. Now in this episodic of this, we move. Eight months, <laughs> eight years later. Eight years later. We okay. created a show together on Comedy Central. It was canceled. We moved in together. We got canceled shortly yeah, after but that. Go to the part where, you, where you're going. Where, what so I, I moved back to St. Louis right. during the pandemic. After you've and been on and off with him now for eight years. He is from St. Louis, and he moved back home with his right. mom in St. Louis. We didn't meet in okay. St. Louis. We, it was just random that we... So what I saw on yeah. the reality show is you're constantly saying... I'm not going to fuck this guy again until, I mean, obviously you already have. Yeah, uh, way uh, past. Until, yeah, we're either going to really be together. Right. Or or I got to move on. It's been eight years. Yes. And your parents are it's saying the same thing. It's embarrassing. Right. Yes. It's not embarrassing, but it's like, it's either fish or cut bait would be the. It's Pretty much. Like, Piss yeah. or get off the pot. That's what know? I always say, and he's just so, like, mm, I'd rather uh, not that it, one. It, it, it leaves off at a uncertain point yeah we because the show wrapped up and they oh my god the producers wanted us to have like this moment of a proposal or like we're officially together right. and we just we weren't there yet we weren't there and i was like i'm not you gonna lie i'm not me. we did we really needed to get away where we could connect and Holy like fuck. really talk about things it hasn't been completely smooth sailing but we are in such a good place right now Can and imagine if you had actually dumped me out of that gig and did your dumb one in st louis and Stop. never i know bill i'm so See, embarrassed i tried to that's the I don't believe I'm, in the universe, but if I did, I would say that's telling you. Oh, no. Like, right? Well, that was the best I- exchange ever with you as I tried to get out of the gig with you in Hawaii. <laughs> and because I, I got an offer to gig in St. Louis that was just more convenient. It was a lot of money. It wasn't about the money. It was just like, it was right down the street. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, I'm, yeah, I feel Hawaii like socially. Or s- Hawaii or St. Louis. I mean, I know, but listen, you're intimidating, Bill. Not that I don't love St. Louis. You're intimidating. It's all your friends. I'm like, I get social anxiety. I'm like, if I can, right. it, it, it's more of that than like, I get uh, it. what a great, yeah. if I would have known what it would be, right? Uh, there's no question. I know. I would turn down anything for I that. I know. Um, and I'm so glad I did, but you came back at me. I just loved your response of being like, oh, it's kind of shitty. And I don't know that I'd really want to be friends with you if you well, if you got weaseled up. Like, I, I can't say that I'm like a big fan of this. of this. And I was like, that's all I fucking needed. I love this guy. What an honest response. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going. I mean, you know, you had committed to it. And it was like, I got something better. I'm like, and you just wrote and said, you know, I hope we, we can still be friends. And I'm like, well, I'm not your enemy, but... Is this really the something Dude, that makes me no want to start a friendship with someone? No, no one, it's not. It's kind of a weasel move. But look, I'm not your enemy, and I'll never do anything against you. But no it's one just, says that. And though. then everyone right. goes, "It's fine." But I like the, and I don't want someone to even be on the no, fence that's about how me. It would have been for the rest of our lives. It, it would have just. I would have seen you for the rest of my life. We would have like, nodded across you know, the room. Yeah, exactly. I've been like, oh, no or fun. maybe in ten years. We you know, would be able to like, talk okay, about it. Okay, if we yes. if we were in some place where we wound up talking, we would have found we did like each other. And, no. <clears throat> but it if, was the easiest decision I ever made. Hey, you know what I always say? Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> you was, no, everything reasons not. happen. I always mock things, people <laughs> who say that. But, but in this case, it w- it really worked out great. Because, it really did. Because, I mean, it was, of all the, I think we've been on this 11 years now, the, the Hawaii trip that yeah. I do in uh, right, New, I, New Year's, December 30th. Oh, Jeff Ross is doing it this oh year. My Jeff God, Ross and Wendy Liebman. It's going to uh, be great. Yeah. Wendy. So the December funniest. 30th in uh, Maui, we always do. And then December that 31st. That is a fantastic show. Honolulu. Oh you you did God. it last year. It was yeah. so fun. You have such okay. a great group of yeah, friends. Yeah, it was such a great group. Just right? great places. to yeah. Just uh, every part of it was fun. It the, was. The plane. 
The plane. The plane. Which you're so scared to get on a private jet with Bill and a bunch of his friends when you don't know any of these people. And you brought your boyfriend who's not really your boyfriend. And you're worried that he's, is he going to have a good time? And and then instantly, as soon as we got to the, um, before we even boarded the plane, you wouldn't even showed up yet. And I was like friends with everyone. I mean, right. and Jim and Eddie you know, and right. Corey <laughs> and uh, Chris, Annabelle. And, my Chris. Yes, was your Chris. Chris. <laughs> yeah, yes, your Chris. First ever kid read. Oh my yes. God. Everyone was so nice. And his girlfriend. <laughs> Everyone like, kept saying, your Chris and my, my Chris. Chris. That's like, which, uh, oh, my Chris. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> the rapper is my, yes. is my Chris. And yes. the, that guy was your Chris. So yeah. so you had a great time with him. And then when, then what? So and then I think it was like a couple weeks after that, I was like. So where are you guys now? We're, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Living and together. And no, not yet. I think that's the next move, but. In St. Louis. Yeah, in St. Louis. And you're going to stay there with him. I don't know if I'm going to stay there, but we're going to stay together and find a, a way to make whatever work. He might take some TV gigs here. He's on the radio there in St. Louis. And so we're, but we really are just talking about the future in terms of what our life will look like together. Because I don't like work. I like him on the road with me. And you I'm, should tell him to text him me. To. He always says he loves me so much, but he never Oh my God, me. really? He would love. Yes. I'm, I remember I sent him that, something about my novel. Remember he yes. had a story and he got, I mean, he never got back to me. I think he's just. Oh, just, he's really bad he's at that, but shy. he's, and he's intimidated but by you. But like, yes, I know. it will get back to him it's, that it's he cool. should yes. text you and he okay. would love that. Well, I'm thrilled. And of course you guys were going to be out here one way or another a lot. Yes. Uh, come on, yes. you're both in show business. Yes. You have, St. Louis, great town, but sure. you know, are you going to. Can't get an abortion there anymore. <laughs> so I gotta get out of yes, Dodge. Right. Right. Missouri. Yeah. Wow. I mean I St. Louis is a hip place, but there it's are a, there are boy, that that's that is a isn't Josh Hawley? Yes. Ugh. God. Oh my I mean there Disgusting. are some I hate to use the word redneck, but boy, there are some fucking rednecks. It's St. Louis, <laughs> it's you forget a, that it's that right. it could be like that in Missouri. You forget right. you forget that right. you're a part of this the state that right. is the first I to mean, do everything. The way backwards. your parents in their lovely home, they could be living Living in Des Moines. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, oh, it's very close to Chicago. It's nice. I, now I know that I can live anywhere. Like right. I might go to Den. I was just in Denver, and I was like, oh, I really like it out here. You I might must, just move here. You must be thinking about the Kinder at this point. What? <laughs> Kinder, children. Really? Oh, no, no. No. I'm not. I'm, you, you, I, I don't think of them. What about Chris? I mean, he. No, he's he, good with not having a meeting. Never? No, we might like oh. to foster at some point or do something like. He, um, if I was good for the planet. A dad in a commercial, he I would is cast. <laughs> the best with kids I've ever seen. No, he it's, just looks like you know, the dad. And he's you, good at playing with them. So if I do yeah, have I kids, he's the perfect your, person to right. have because I don't really like to play with kids. And I, I want teenagers. I can't. I would love. I would be a great mother to like a teenager. That's rough when you have them. I know. I know that <laughs> so, people are listening, going, "Yeah, I'm sure you would love my daughter no, fucking people, cutting herself and telling me she's going to kill me someday." People always say, um, you know, they always said it to me anyway. Look, when I would say I don't like kids, I would, but if when you have your own, you're going to love. And I always say, what if "No, I, I will be the first guy to look in the basket and go, nope, still nothing." I know. And oh my God. My I, friend Rachel you might be the second. <laughs> has the greatest bit about that. She's a new mom and she's like, she keeps, she can't, she was so scared of being a mom who just didn't care for her kid. Like would just not feel anything that when she talks to people now, she's like, and I just love her so much. Like when I look at her, I like, I really yeah. do love her. And people, she says that people are like, yeah, duh. But it's notable to her because she was so scared she would be that way. And which I would be too. I, I love my niece and nephew, but. This whole idea that I have to be a good aunt or whenever I feel like I'm failing as an aunt, I remind myself, like, I didn't choose this. I didn't ask for this. Let me ask Being you a bad a, mom is a bad, you, you know. Let me ask you a you can that cynical question. I'm certainly not the first one to think of this, but I've heard it before. Like, people who say that, you know, I look at the kid and I love him so much. Do you think a lot of that is sort of egotistical Narcissism? yeah yeah you do <laughs> i used to always my dad that it's always, like it's you it's your mini me it's is it really yeah sometimes i excuse my dad's love by saying i just look like you a lot i look like you i remind you of you right. you like yourself and that's fine i feel it i i feel my father's love it's a reason why right. i can do so many things in this world because my dad loves me unconditionally 
but I really am a lot like him, and I think he yeah. likes it a lot about himself. And I'm only sus a little suspicious of that guy. Not that it's not then wonderful. Then why wouldn't but, you adopt? But Ex you know, if you love kids so much and you, right. you care about children so much, why wouldn't you give? Because of the I once had a guy say, you know, it's just like you risk, like you know, the kid could have. Just a family tree of mental illness that you don't know about. It's just a risk. I respect that you would adopt Nikki, but I want my own kids, and that's why we can't be together. He was using it as an excuse because he just like got tired of fucking me or whatever. You know, he met someone else. But he was like, it's because you don't want kids. And I was like, I would adopt. And he goes, oh, oh, God, yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's so good that you would do that, but you still can't be together. And I'm like, but your family tree is... Th that should be de de deforest. Like you, you, you have more <laughs> mental illness and <laughs> alcoholism, and you know, just and so you need to. That should be more of a worry for you. But it's narcissism. I mean, it's you got to admit it's there, fun to see yourself I, as a little thing, and that's part of it. Right, and I think it's also a little more. It's okay. Right, I but think it's it, part of it, and it's also a little uh, people. What scares people the most, of course, mortality, and it's a little. I'm not really dying yes. because this is me. Yeah, my it's still DNA me. Yeah, lives yeah, on. It's right, and it's sort of. I'm not. I That's am dying, but not. Re and you know, but again, let's not set ourselves up here as child haters. And no, and we're not. You know, we're not saying being a parent is a. I your just don't like them, but I don't hate them. Selfish narcissists. No. Yeah. But there is a little bit of that element. Yes. You know, <laughs> okay. It, it, there, it, it was, I agree with you. Glad it was really, not just me. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that parents would go, right. it's not, that's not why I do it. Of course it is. Right. Or you would adopt. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. And yeah. I know that adoption, but that's yeah. expensive. You're what right. do you think a kid is? Right. If you can't afford to adopt right. and to put up with all the red tape to get one, and I, I maybe it's a process that I don't understand and someone's going to lecture me in my DMs, but I think that... The reason people don't adopt and they have kids is because you want to see, you either want to carry a child, which is, you know, a noble thing. And some women just yearn to have that experience. Yes. Or you want to see what you look like as a little you. Right. You want to, and I get and, that. Like and, when you and fuck mold, someone, you want to make something with them. And mold you. Yes. You know, and have, you know, I mean, like, like I'm sure you know this, Nikki, in The Godfather, the God, Don horse. Corleone, is just very like disappointed that yeah. Michael Corleone doesn't want to be in the family business. Ah, uh, yes. But I don't have to tell you that. No, you know what I found out, though, that kind of disappointed me? Because I'm a narcissist as well, and I would like to mold something. I thought that you could mold a, a kid you adopt more so than I thought. A study uh, came out that said that... Um, a parent's IQ will never affect um, the child's IQ of, through adoption. It's it's genetic. It is not uh, nurture. Right. It is all right. nature. IQ. IQ. Yes. That was a bummer I've, to of me. Of course. I didn't know that. I've heard that too. I thought I could get a, make right. someone a little bit more intelligent, or uh, right. but you can't. You, you're stuck with what you got. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Now, of course, like everything in science and medicine, they could come out tomorrow and, and say, did, no, yes. we did another study and we found out that that's not quite EQ, true. EQ, maybe you can fuck with. Emotional intelligence, I think right. I, that's the thing that I could no, have, you, have a hand in. You that can't, I, I mean, uh, uh, you're probably born with a certain size brain or maybe I, maybe they're all the same size. I don't know why some are better than others. <laughs> I don't I, either. I do know that the reason why humans... Sam could tell us. What? Sam Harris could tell us. Yes, Sam could totally tell us. <laughs> yes. Um, but he ain't Without here. a single um or like. <laughs> God damn it, that guy never talks with a pause. Fuck. <laughs> he ain't here and he ain't a comedian. Yes. So we got a few things That's, on That's okay, 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 good. Did you know HBO Max had podcasts? <laughs> I'm on my podcast talking about the podcast on my network. This must be what the metaverse feels like. Now go even deeper inside your favorite shows with audio companions to some of the most groundbreaking and award-winning shows on television. The HBO Max Movie Club is back for season two. Host Matt Rogers from the Los Culturistas podcast will once again be joined by filmmakers and celebrity friends as they dig deep into the HBO Max movie library. The podcast covers the freshest new releases and the most beloved films from the HBO Max archive. You can listen to HBO Max Movie Club wherever you get your podcasts. I do know that humans uh, became the dominant species on the planet because for some reason in evolution, our brains took a giant leap forward, whereas the apes did not. Apes are physically bigger, but their brains 
didn't, our, like for some reason our calories started to go into our brain. Right. You know, like it all goes to my hips, yes. it all goes to yes. my brain. Yeah, <laughs> that, what, what was the, it? Was it tools? I don't, well, tools was a result of them having a right. bigger brain. Right, so maybe <laughs> the tools opened up a world, you no, know? No, the brain opened up the tools. Well, the chicken or the egg. It's I mean, not a chicken or the it egg It stays thing. the different and the same. No, Whatever they would not have thought of tools <laughs> if their brain the didn't get bigger. That's yeah. the thing. Think, well, okay. I mean, well, what if a what if an ape discovers a tool, Bill, <laughs> and this tool where they use a piece of grass to root out some ants in a hole, and they're using the tool to lick the ants off the piece of grass? All of a sudden, the use of that tool, which yes, their brain contributed them to find the tool, that makes them realize other tools, which then expands their IQ. It could be both. So you're saying that a gorilla could open a Home Depot? Is this <laughs> Eventually, scary? that's what we did too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how closely related Wait, we are to gorillas. Is that a fact that that gorillas use a stick to get ants and lick them off? That, the, it, I don't know what uh, you sure know ape, if ape it is, but that is a, a tool <laughs> that is used by primates to. They put a little piece of grass in a hole and then they lick it off. It's true. I love the word primates. Yeah, I do. So speaking of your primate. Oh, that, whoa, that was... I just want to get back to one thing was good. before we run out of... Can I have, like, a, a one hit of that? You can have a whole one. I don't want to light a whole one because okay. I, don't, right. I will let, start let not it. making sense and I will not remember my train of thought start. in the middle of a... <laughs> Fuck you. Don't you have such trouble with short-term memory with these things? Like, I'll be in the middle of... Um, what was the question? Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, you know what? That's all I want. I used to hang around oh, that's with, good. at the end of his life, Dr. Timothy Leary. In fact, you see that chair that's hanging in the, on the wall over there? Yes. That's a Timothy Leary. And I say that because he burned a hole in it at a party of mine yeah. in 1992. Oh my God. With a cigarette. Wow. And because it had a hole in the chair was ruined, he signed it. Amazing. And, and that's art. And now it's art. And it's Timothy Leary. Have you but done... He used to say to me, he said, you know, people would ask him, you know, have, has it affected your memory? He said, yeah, that's why I carry a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and his point was, it's so much better to have the creativity Dude. and the thoughts. It, any idiot can write stuff I down. I struggle with it. I struggle with you the know. guilt I have about smoking weed and how it does affect my short-term memory. I'll be on stage high and I'll say... To oh, me, really? I'll be in the... Oh, Yeah. Because I, I go through, like, when I was in Hawaii, I was on an abstinence train. I took nine months off of smoking weed. It was supposed to be for life, but, you know, shit happens. And <laughs> oh, it's, it's a lesser of a few different evils that I can turn to. So I, I turn to it at times, but then it always ends up, I end up wanting to get high before I go on stage because it's like. Right before? Yeah, because then it's like my mind's thinking differently. Wow. I'm like kind of excited. It's scary again. Like I get nervous. I, in my last special, I told the this, this story about the two times. Oh, yes. Oh, and, yes. And the punchline of the one. It's, it's, it is a punchline. It's a great punchline, but it's an absolute truth. I was on stage and I s said the word Obama and then thought to myself, is that his name? Dude, I, when you and said that, that is it's... A real it's a real one thing. of those real stories. It turns into a great joke because it's just I can't. So know, thank God I for get, that moment. But I well, mean, it how dumb. It was so terrifying. terrifying. But sometimes I feel alive terrifying. when I'm in the middle of a joke. Terrifying. I have to turn to the audience and say, no. "What was I just talking about?" And it's so embarrassing. But, I, be, no, the, but on it this also show, opens I, different places <laughs> of my I mind. I do it all the time. Yeah. But that's why I love Club Random. Yes. But when I'm doing real time or when I'm doing stand up, I know I want to be. Jackety split, Mister Perfect. I don't. I, You're right. You know, I use you, that. So you said you smoke weed when you perform. Yes, I do, but not right before. Oh well, you when? Know, like, but then I get tired. It's like two hours. No, it's well, you know, it's the right balance. Um, Tell but, me you about know, your balance. But, you know, you see, I use that music stand with the my. Oh notebook. yes. So like, I know, I like to know, I like to really cover a lot of stuff. I mean, your special was very tight, but of course, when you do a special, you probably had a teleprompter. Yes, I did. Right. So you, I like. See, I like that kind of comedy. I what I hate oh, is meandering. you know what my least favorite two words in comedy are. What else? Thank you. Exactly. I can't stand it. Give me a what up. else? And what else? Looking at the ground. What do you mean? And what else? I love that you knew where 
Uh, what else? And, w- and, and what else? Uh, that's why I have that music stand. I always know what else because you're paid to see it me. It is such I'm a going to bad... cram in the best I can. You're and... either forcing it, like you're right. acting like you're trying to pretend to be casual, which is so, like, cool, or you really aren't yeah, prepared. exactly. That's how I take it. And I, listen, I have a lot of what else fires off in my brain constantly during my set, but I gra- I, I, I know that there is something in my cloud of words or bits hovering over my head that I can grab from randomly. I yeah, have so yeah. many jokes at this point that whatever, and my, you know what my new out for what else is, if there are any comics listening, that you panic about worrying what, what joke is next and losing your place and then you blank and the audience loses uh, respect for you. Just say what's, I always just go, what's true? And then it immediately gets you out. I'm high right. and I forgot what I'm going to say next. These pants are too tight and they're distracting me. Right. This guy, <laughs> this hat, your it, your hat is ugly. Like whatever right. is true and it's instant relief. You're like right. the audience, will, it will never fail if you say the most true thing to bail you out. And I always well, forget because when you're doing stand-up, you're trying so hard to convince them that you've got it. And when you start panicking that you don't got it, oh. you're only, you look more panicked. Right. And now I just have to realize I have to let go right. and just observe what's around me and just say it. Right. And it will always get me out and get me to a place of calm. Like, okay, they like me again. Now I can kind of think right. and say what I want to say next. That is the natural like thing I want to say instead of like grasping. Um, so that's a, an instant out is just say what's true. And I try to remember that during podcasts. I mean, even like, press stuff like gets me nervous like just this this thank god I mean I hate to say it I was not nervous to come to this because we don't have microphones it doesn't feel overly highly produced that I'm going to be reminded I'm on tv constantly and also like I mean I would have pre-Hawaii I would have been like just sick all day with nerves to talk to you I mean even doing your tv show but then the second I talked to you gone because I didn't have, I didn't yeah. have any inter- interaction with you except on email before right. I did your show in person, right. even backstage. First time I right. talked to you in person, no, see your I face know. move, and I'm but a very you, scary character apparently. But but you aren't <laughs> I because know. The, but the second I <laughs> talk to you, I get exactly what your vibe is, and I'm comfortable. Right. Um, but but I was ner- I was nervous up to that point, but today I was just like, oh yeah, I get to go hang out with. Oh, Bill. I was looking forward to it all week. Me too. Yeah, of course. Me too. Okay, so the other thing about your special, I have to say, it's so, yeah. and this is what I was starting to say a million years ago when I said, um, you know, uh, when was that sentence that I contracted? Uh, the more things stay the same. Yes, the more because, things stay the same. Because, like, I know there's been a lot of changes with uh, fluidity and so forth. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we're all right-thinking people who want everyone who to be whatever they want. We're all for that. Your okay. tone, I don't appreciate. <laughs> no, I don't it's believe true. you. <laughs> but basically, most people born with a vagina are what we used to call women. Okay. And they have the same, like. Uh, God, just, don't get me on trans rights. This, this is. I'm, I'm just saying. This is. All I'm saying is most. The the let's just call them women classic. Uh, Cis it's, women. They have the same. DNA or desire, whatever is in their pit of their gut. And the reason I'm saying this Just is because... deep in those guts. Is because... Up in them guts. Like, what do women have? Yeah. Your thing uh-huh. about, you know, not fucking a guy. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, this... I could have... I could find a, a... Not having sex until a guy loves you. Right. Yes, I could my find rule. A, but a rule that I could find enunciated in the 50s. Right, right. It's a throwback. It was was ever thus. And I have a feeling it will be thus for many, many years to come. It is just thus. It is just part of women to want that. To want what? A guy to love you before he sticks his dick in you. Yes, but why is it not uh, intuitive for us at this point as women? Why do we give it up constantly in our society, in our modern society, we give it up constantly before we okay, get it. We'll, Almost every time. We'll get to that. Okay. But first, there, I'm just going to continue on this for yeah, a second. Because I'm trying there, to there was a up. book in the 90s called The Rules. 
Oh, I know the rules, and I think I oh, agree you with do? many of them. Yes. Well, oh. the book Getting to I Do is very sim. The book I talk about in my special Getting to I Do, where I it's get all these not ideas. Dissimilar. Oh, it's very similar. It's okay. along the same lines. It's these pathetic books that women pick up that are like, "Here's how you do it, ladies." Written by two single women <laughs> or like two divorcees. <laughs> Who would if we could, but I don't want to, you know, like millionaire matchmaker, that bitch knows what she's talking about. But you know, people, you can't always, people that know what they're talking about don't always practice what they preach. Obviously, like some of my best therapists have been fucking bad shit. Oh, they're so all bad shit. The, the, but the woman who wrote the book I talk about in my special, Pat, Dr. Pat Allen, she follows her own book and has a very great relationship and um, is just a very smart woman, woman who it just made a lot of sense to me. And my mom always used to say, don't give up your sex, Nick. Don't do it. Don't give up your sex. I w and it was just always so gross to me. Like, what did that even mean? And I just thought it was the lamest advice. She was like, don't do it. And my mom was such a prude. And that's how she got my dad. She would not sleep with him. Well, they, what was it they used to say about the don't give up the cow? Yeah, until the, you get the, the, the you the go, milk. don't buy the milk if you get the cow for free. <laughs> what? No. We're nailing them all. Yes. <laughs> don't why, buy, why, don't buy the no. cow if you get the milk for free. Right, right. Incentivize it. Like, I always tell okay. girls that, like, if you think, because I used to be this so girl that, that has wanted a boyfriend. that changed yes. through the eons. But no one is abiding by it. I got to find a different way I, to get through to these women. But I think they are. And I may have told this story before, so if I have, I'm going to tell it again. Yeah, Fuck just you. put it on the two times. The but it's not really a story. But I, when that book, The Rules, was out. Yeah. I remember it was on my table at home, and this girl like a joke. picked it up and went, oh, the rules. And she started to look at the cover, oh, and she yeah. turned it over and saw the two girls and went, oh, I can see why they need a strategy. Oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I need a strategy. I'm You don't need a strategy. Listen, yes, I do. Well, you Bill? certainly could get a lot of guys. No, no, no. Very yes, but interested. not the ones I want. Not, not the ones I want. The one. Not the one I it's wanted. The like one. I couldn't have. Right. Like I, I got him. But when right. I first got him, I have to say that I was not good for him, and he was not good for me. We are two totally different people than the people we were when we dated back then. Like I, we sh those two people should never be together. They were bad for each other. Wow. But we have both changed. And decided that we don't want to be those. And you're so far beyond. Are we going to have sex or not? You know, oh yeah, but you know what? I wanted it to be special with him because yeah. we had not had sex since June of 2000, like 19, which was the longest we had gone because we would always either get back together and start having sex or have sex just casually. And I really did not want something with him, and I would always end up falling back in love with him every single time. Wow. And he would always remind me like. I don't want to be married. Like, I don't want to be with anyone. And like, he felt, you know, there were, there was anger in both of us that we hadn't talked about and we weren't going to address, but we were sleeping together because we have amazing, amazing time and in the like bedroom. In, you like it in the naughty place. Yeah, he, he will, he does, he's a very accommodating lover and I love him for it. And it's always, it's, <laughs> what a hero fucking you in the ass. Huh? Why, why yeah. is, look, once again, you're giving the no, man I'm more, really lazy you're about giving Bill, the Bill. man more credit Bill. than he deserves. No, no, no. This guy gets credit. He fucking works. I don't, one time I remember when we were uh -oh. living together, he was horny and I was just, I'm, oh, I, if you're horny for me, I will instantly get horny. Like that makes me horny. Like it's, I'm never not in the mood, but for whatever reason, I just wasn't in the mood. I was so tired. And I was just like, babe, you can do it. But like, and I'm on my stomach sleeping and I'm like, but I'm just going to like lay here. Like you, but you totally oh. can. And he goes, is this oh, and he goes, oh, as opposed to what? <laughs> Cause I literally lay there. I just like, I was very submissive in bed. And so I just like, oh. I mean, I like being tied up, but if you can't tie me up, like, I'll just be like, I get like, I'll pretend like I am. So I don't have to do anything. I really like being serviced and fully like not in control. And it's awesome. And, and it's nice that he never makes me feel bad about that. I do work at times, but like I bring it in other ways. But for to not have to ever ride a guy, I don't want to fucking be on top. Literally when, ever. It doesn't feel good to me, and I don't like it, and I get winded. When you say work... Uh, <laughs> I just heard a laugh. I heard a producer laugh in the back. I heard a woman's that laugh, because she's the, like, she gets was, it. That was the neighbor. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, I'm the neighbor. Um, okay, so... <laughs> You're the neighbor. <laughs> wait. Work. Let's define work. Being on top. Is <laughs> That's work? Oh, yeah. Oh my God, it is exhausting. It really hurts my thighs. It hurts my hips. I like feel sore afterwards. Like I've been oh. riding a horse. Like it feels di like it's, it's disjoining. It's oh. exhausting almost immediately. Like I just want to say like I give it up to guys who do most of the humping and the work. 
So you it like is exhausting. Like a missionary position is better for you no, because you're. No, it literally. I want to make it easy for them. So my favorite position, and I'm not trying to be titillating. I think it's just a, a good. This is just good information to have off the bed. I lay on my back off the bed, and they get to stand and just like be like right humping the like right where the mattress hits. Well, that's I, like the easiest for both of us. I feel like the chances of the Family Research Council repeating this show anywhere are. Who is the Family Research Council? Like a super Christian organization. <laughs> You never heard of the family? No, oh, no. It's like with the judge. Gosh, it's like with the, with the Yeah, exactly. It's, this is totally a gazpacho moment. It is. I'm sure I know. I should know yeah. what that is. Well, they're just, you know, it's like, I think the Duggars were part of that. Oh, God, you yes, know, they're, yes. They're like, you know, everything is all... <laughs> I'm no, just saying they don't. They are not going to rerun this do. segment as and much as I. Would. Why should they? They are uh, well, in, into fucking children. I was hoping. <laughs> so that's not going to work. Well, uh, before we go to, they're far, not all. Not they're, all of them are into fucking no. children. No, and the Duggars may not have been associated with the Family Research Council, but I can almost guarantee if they weren't, they were big fads. Okay, okay? <laughs> they're all. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking about super duper Christian okay, types, yes. I feel very. Safe on safe ground, yes. saying that they're in that I, that particular. I you know I pot. just I cannot stop talking about sex, especially with the, all the Roe v Wade stuff. I'm so glad the special is coming out because it is kind of in your face sexual, and I'm just tired of. And I dress, I'm, I look kind of hot in it, which was like a choice for me because I'm yeah, always I like it. I don't want to be. I don't want to be titillating. I'm not trying to make anyone's dicks hard when I'm up there. That's I think it was very tr- titillating, and I think that's great. Uh, but it's horniness and being and laughing. Well, They're two different feelings, and no. I don't want to engage both. But I when do I, like to look cute and have fun. Uh, why shouldn't you? Ex- because, because I'm a comedian, know, Bill, and, and I'm just and, be funny, Nikki. And also, you know, you're not always going to be able to wear that. Exactly. So, Strike while the iron is a seven. Or as I say, as <laughs> still I, an eight. As I've said to many girls who are asking me if they should get married, lock in while rates are low. Oh my God! That's really what you want to do. I know. That's what you want. Here's the thing: is I know that I'm going to age like Robin. Robin Wright Penn is my goal to age like her and to stay sexy. Well, like sexy for a certain, not for you, but for a certain (laughs) man. No offense, Bill. I've already passed Bill's cutoff. Stop it. And I don't take a. And I don't. I don't care. Like I like that you're honest about what you like. That is to me. Thank you. So refreshing because this. Because there are people that are not lying about being into older women. They are and great. Absolutely, but then if more than not ever. A criminal, if you you're not attracted to an older woman, no, you can't help what you like. It's what your it's what your normal DNA is telling you. Most men are faking it. Okay, I'm just not faking if, it. If but men yes, are, but they, yes. Uh, let me just say, I've noticed this trend a lot. Men are way more into older women than they didn't than they used to then be. They used to be great, especially because there's out, more of us. We're especially living longer. out here in LA. That's oh, a yeah. big thing. Yeah. Maybe it's because the 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 uh, milfs and the and the uh, cougars. Well the, well, the young girls have had it good for too long. Well, they, but they taking back the city. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the, the city of young women since the beginning, of, since the fifties. So yeah, right. I like it. And I'm sure. But we see where are you seeing older women oh, thriving uh, oh, sexually everywhere. In the city. This really? this is this, L A is that kind of city. I'm telling you, it's it's I love because it. because it's okay, a lot maybe of you're gonna move back. It's it's like a lot of pretty boys. You know, it's like oh the, yeah, that, boys that, like the older woman. That dynamic the stepmother. Was, well, I don't know, but it, that, that dynamic is reversed here compared to I'm not reversed completely, but there's a lot of like pretty twenty year old boys who are with forty year old women. Yeah, or I like love that. it. Yeah. <laughs> they're Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, you know, like yes. I love these girls dating younger guys. I Yeah, yeah. what is this about you when uh, you had some f- what, something with the Kardashian? I mean, even that oh, got yeah. on my radar and it's like So stupid. What, what is the body thing? I mean, like I'm I just want transparency What in, does that mean? Uh in what work women are having when they are, you know, the ambassadors of skin care products. I want them to be completely transparent about the stuff that they use what to look good. What is she lying about? Well, she has a skincare line that I would love to use. I, Kim Kardashian, I like her. She once said, which I love so much in a Rolling Stone article recently, I think it was Rolling Stone, that she would eat poop every day if it meant staying younger. That's how important it is to her. And that's a funny thing to say. Like, I respected it. And I like, I watch her show. I like her. I have a particular thing about shit, so I can't. Oh, okay, I mean, so you don't like one that. one thing that I told you. I, it's the one thing Oh, I yeah, can't. you I, and Chris share that. Yes. Yeah. I hate any shit jokes. Yes. Uh, okay. So, so that's why it's so, but it's but she's so a insane nice person. For, I agree. Me, for Kim Kardashian to say that she would eat poop. I mean, that's a disgusting thing for Kim Kardashian to say. It's, it's disgusting for anybody to say. So it, let's stop saying it. But it, it proves a point, but you're right. I know that's your thing and I'm sorry. I won't talk about it again. <laughs> and that's why you said piss or get off the pot. 
instead of shitting it off the pot. You were so cute that you modified every picture. No, I can say shit. It's not going to drive know, me I crazy, know. but it's just gross. And it's I shit. Get, I why, know. why do I have to explain this? I know. I'm sorry. Okay, well, so. Your kids with your anal, everything. Do you even know there's well, a pussy down there? Well, you know what? Shit to me, that's, you know, you know why I like shit jokes? Because it is something we <laughs> all do every single day. It oh. is a part of our lives that are so shameful and yet we all are doing it and it's like if we just talked about it's a little that, bit we wouldn't like stick with we're not that doesn't mean we're gonna start not, eating it it's, it's just we're yeah. just gonna talk it's a thing it's not shameful it's gross there's a difference it's not shameful I'm not ashamed I have to take a shit I feel like I just grossness don't and shame are intertwined for me then well that's something that really a shrink should talk about then that, well that, you just unlocked it for me Bill yeah so. really I mean because they're not the same thing that, that you're completely associating I mean that's I think basic Freudian or Erickson or one of them talked about the anal stage. Oh, from, yeah, from yeah. Something to... definitely happened in mine. Right. Okay. For sure. And, that, and that, that affects your personality for the rest of your life. Mm. I mean, I'm anal in the sense of very neat, very organized. Yes. I'm not sure why they connect that to anal or why. Yeah, that, that's not the, that probably the word didn't come from. Uh, no, I think it might be that oh. they, you know, look, my mother I'm, was a great mother, so I'm sure she kept me very clean. But I think it usually comes from if you had a bad experience, like sitting in your own shit or something. Yes. That's where I think people <laughs> want to play with shit. I'm not into that. Like, I don't, oh. like, but like anal stuff, I do like, and there is a, and there is, something happened then, because I remember, I remember waiting for my mom to pick me up. This is not gross. I promise you this yeah, isn't it's gross. It's okay. Um, I, I was waiting for my mom to pick me up from my friend Kirsten's house and like sitting, uh, waiting on her front porch. And she had like a, it looked like a butt plug, like on, as the, um on the railing, you know, like the point of the railing. And I just remember like, just, you know, like we're just like kids bouncing around at probably like sixth <laughs> or seventh grade. And I remember it kind of went up my ass and I was like, oh <laughs> boy, mommy likey. And it felt really? like, it instantly felt that feels so good. Don't ever do that again. It was wow. m more so like than heroin. when I would like hump uh, like a, a, a bar as you do as a, a young woman or as you like, I was never it right. instantly. So it was a thing for me, but I think it is horses. for a lot of people. Don't young women like horses because. Yeah, we were middle class. So it didn't, no, that was but... maybe birthday parties a couple of <laughs> times, but it wasn't, it wasn't no, going to be something I could really get into. <laughs> but isn't that a thing that yeah, oh, some, yeah. it, it's kind of like a vibrator to sit on a horse or something? Oh yeah. Yeah. I could see you de uh, girls definitely being able so, to come from riding a horse what animal, but, what or animal, gymnastics what animal or your hymen you, rips. What animal, animal could you get on that would stimulate oh, your asshole? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a different A animal? narwhal? A camel. Um, yeah, a camel. <laughs> <laughs> or a, something with something the protruding thing on its back. I mean, yeah. a porcupine. Oh, uh, God. I know, a a I, stegosaurus might be As very... a vegan, uh, I couldn't, but um, I will think about it later. All right, so things are good. In, <laughs> yeah, things with, are pretty good. Yeah, very good. Oh, I, well, I feel better now. It's so fun to just have like a fun um, hang that, and, and get work done and it doesn't feel like work. So. All right, so um, tell your boyfriend I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> tell your boyfriend. You know, I know. I mean, I usually use that phrase very, like, sarcastically. I tell know. Your boyfriend, I love I, it. But this, in this case, it's very true. I'm, I'm I love so it. Happy I can't for wait you. to, like, have a, a lifetime of hangs with you, I'm with him. I'm so um, uh, verklempt. Is that the word? Oh, yeah, I, I'll I take learned, that. I learned it from a sketch, so I don't know. Yeah, but me I'm too. so verklempt. I think that's the word that you, uh, you know, and Chris... That I was able to have play a small part in moving that along. Absolutely, it, I can't think of two Huge. people who like, um, you know, look better together. And he was so solicitous of you. I remember him taking the, the video when you were on stage. He was in the wings, like genuinely laughing at jokes he must have heard a thousand so times. So many times that were sometimes and about him or like I at remember, his expense. Right. I oh, remember God, on that trip, such a trooper. People saying like, "Wow." He really loves her because, you know, and that was my evidence. Like, wow, when you're laughing at the joke you heard a million times, that's uh, that's love. It's and that is such an important part yeah. of our relationship for me is that he really just thinks I hung the moon in terms of like talent. And sometimes I I constantly doubt that about myself. And I need that's the most yeah. value. If I have that by my side the rest of my life, I'm going to be like able to do anything. Someone that's constantly telling you and you trust their opinion it's, when it comes to comedy. Oh. 
telling it's, you you're funny and that you can do anything and like knows TV. It just gives me so much confidence. It's like Joan Rivers and Edgar, and that came out. <laughs> oh wait, that's a no bad example. Bad example. Lucy and Desi. I mean, oh wait, that's not good. Oh no, it. another Fuck. bad example. Uh, I'm uh, sure this one, Lucy and Gary <laughs> Morton. <laughs> All right. Has it ever worked? No. Ugh. All right. Time to go. All right. I oh, love you. The best. All right. Well, now so we can fun. find out. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm Club. This was uh, so fun. I'm going to, can I have the rest of this? Or yeah, just, yeah. as I walk you out? Wanna, you want to, you want to. No, no, no. I don't need All right.